Intervertebral disc disease is most prevalent in small breed dogs, such as French Bulldogs, Dachshunds, Lhasa Apsos, and Shih Tzus. These breeds genetically are predisposed to having the center part of that jelly donut, or center part of the disc, calcify and mineralize at a very early age. When the jelly part of the disc is calcified, mineralized, or dried out, it's not as supple. Sometimes in these dogs, just a twist the wrong or right way puts enough pressure on that disc that the center part basically erupts or pops outside of the wrapper and extrudes up into the spinal canal, causing damage to the spinal cord. Clinical signs of intervertebral disc disease can vary greatly from back pain that gets better on its own with a little bit of rest and medication to animals that have trouble walking to animals that can't walk or sometimes can't feel their toes. Prognosis if your animal has signs of intervertebral disc disease is going to vary depending on the clinical signs. Often if the animal is still walking but just has back pain, we'll tend to start medically with some anti-inflammatories, strict rest, and hope that things self-correct or resolve on their own. If your animal comes in and has trouble walking, can't walk, is paralyzed, recommendations are going to be more aggressive with looking at doing an MRI to confirm if your animal had a herniated disc, and if so, surgery is going to be discussed. Prognosis for disc disease depends on how bad the animal is at the time of presentation. In general, we'll say that if they're paralyzed, as long as they can still feel their toes when they're pinched with a hemostat, prognosis with surgery is excellent, 85 to 95% positive outcome. If your dog is paralyzed and has no sensation in the toes, prognosis if surgery is performed within 24 hours of losing sensation is 50-50 that your animal will recover ability to walk. If it's been greater than 24 hours, the prognosis drops down to less than 5% chance even if you do surgery. It is very important if your animal has back pain or trouble walking that you see your vet immediately to determine the next step for your pet. If surgical intervention is not an option for you or your animal, medical management can be considered. Medical management is a combination of steroids or an anti-inflammatory as well as pain medications and severe strict crate rest. If your animal is paralyzed, assume that the animal cannot voluntarily urinate, so you may also have to learn how to manually express your animal's bladder or pass a urinary catheter to keep the bladder from getting overextended. Strict rest for the first week to two weeks, then potential follow-up recheck with your veterinarian or neurologist to see if there's been any improvement. After two weeks, if no improvement has been noted, this would be a time that we would make a decision on whether you think a wheelchair would be right for your dog and your family. Understanding that paralyzed dogs also require lifelong bladder and bowel management. If your animal is admitted to the hospital for an MRI and surgery, what's involved is following the MR scan, your neurologist will call you and let you know our findings. The MR scan basically confirms if we have a disc extrusion, and it's like a roadmap. It tells us where to go surgically on how to remove that disc. Disc disease can happen in the neck, the cervical region, or in the thoracolumbar region, the back. The goal of both of these surgeries is to remove the extruded disc material from the spinal canal. If your dog's disc extrusion is in the neck, the procedure that we are going to perform is called a ventral slot. To perform this procedure, your dog will be laying on its back and we will shave the ventral aspect of the neck. If your dog's disc extrusion is in the back, your dog will be laying on its abdomen and the back portion of your dog's back will be shaved. For both procedures, we are going to use a drill to gain access into the spinal column so we can see the disc material and remove it from compressing on the spinal cord. Surgical time can vary anywhere from an hour to a couple of hours. Following surgery, you can expect your animal to be in the hospital for two to three days. During the hospital stay, your animal will be treated with pain medications, IV fluids, and anti-inflammatory medications. Careful attention will be made to the incision, the comfort of the animal, and evaluating the neurological status and making sure that your animal is urinating. Your dog is ready for discharge when we start seeing some improvement in the neurological status, when they're comfortable and they're urinating on their own. At the time of discharge, we will review with you your home care instructions. 
This is gonna involve strict crate rest at home. The size of the crate should be large enough to allow your animal to stand up, turn around, lay down, and have a food and water bowl in the crate with them. Your dog should be in the crate 23 and a half out of 24 hours a day for the first two weeks post-operatively. This is extremely important because the disc is still healing. Excessive motion and activity can result in further disc extrusion and potentially setback relapse of original clinical signs. You can carry your animal outside three to four times a day, place them down on the ground, always remember to have a leash on, and use the sling provided to you to help them ambulate and go to the bathroom. This is your time to evaluate how are you doing? You comfortable? How are the legs moving? And did they urinate or defecate? If they don't, pick them back up, try again in an hour. Your animal after discharge from the hospital should just continue to make gradual improvements over the following couple of days, following couple of weeks. If there's any ever any concern that there's a setback or relapse or your animal cannot do something that they could do on the day of discharge, your animal should be brought back to the hospital for evaluation. Your pet should be comfortable every time they're picked up or moved or adjusted in their crate and you should see at least one large urination at least once daily. Following surgery, we'll see your pet back in two weeks for a suture removal, recheck examination and a discussion of the next steps. At that point in time, if the animal is progressing as expected, we will start increasing their activity, starting with short but frequent walks, always on a leash, starting at about five to 10 minutes a couple of times a day. Each week, you add five minutes per walk per week. The goal is to be back to normal duration of activity by about six to eight weeks post-op. Lifelong changes often are recommended. If your small breed dog has had back surgery, we tell you that there's about a 20% chance that your dog may have another disc-related injury at some point in the future. This sometimes is just back or neck pain that's easily managed with medications and rest, but there's also a possibility that they may require surgery again. Because they're predisposed to having disc issues, we do recommend some lifestyle changes. Those include refraining from jumping on and off couches, beds, and avoiding stairs. I often get asked if the owners can use a ramp or steps. The problem with ramps or steps is that they can certainly get your animal up on the couch, but if not attended, the animal may also jump off the couch. That off could have some devastating results. We do want them to be active, uh, but we often recommend walks versus off-leash running or rough playing with other animals in the backyard. Think yoga and swimming, not soccer and football.